Welcome back to the RDWorks Learning Lab. Today we're going to look at this set of tools across the top of the work area. Now these are for positioning and for alignment of objects. So first of all let's drag in a rectangle. You'll notice that the, uh, the coordinate, sorry, this green dot that I mentioned early on sticks to the top left hand corner of our work area at the moment. It appears to be on the corner of this object. If I draw a little circle up here it decides it doesn't like this square and it goes and sits up there because that is the corner of whatever the work area is. When we first set the page up we set up system settings and there was something there which is called the laser head and I think if I move that and close it the, the reference dot moves to the other side it begins to explain a little bit about what this green dot does so go back and set it up to where we where we know that our head actually sits which is over in this uh, top left hand corner and we'll say close I guess that when we start doing some programming we may well find this is the start point for the program over on the top left hand corner of our object we'll have to wait and see I don't know so first let's put some handles on here um, to make sure that this is the object that we're telling the computer we're working with and then we will go to this top left click on there as a tool nothing happens you have to go to the line and click on the line and it jumps to the top left hand corner as it says in the tool put handles back on here and we'll go to bottom left hand corner we need to click on the tool first and then go back to the object and click on the line and there we go it jumps around handles on the object center of the page touch the object and there we go I'm afraid there's nothing more complex in those tools than that but you've just got to understand how to use them the manner in which to use them w what their purpose is I can't fully understand at the moment but undoubtedly that may become obvious as we get further and further into understanding this program for the next set of tools which is this set across here I'm going to draw another square and I'm going to draw that as a big one. I want you to remember that the big rectangle was the second rectangle that I drew because I'm going to choose one of these tools now. Briefly we mentioned something called a marquee tool in one of our earlier sessions. I'm going to use that marquee tool again. It's, it's not something that you have to pick up, it's something that's automatically there. You just put that, push down your left mouse hat button and drag it around and you get this marquee tool and as you can see it doesn't just put handles on this object it puts handles on a shape which encompasses both objects that's because we're going to align these objects relative to each other and what we're going to do we're going to align left now remember the second object was this big one and this basically the second object is the magnet so when I do this and click on either one of these objects now it could be this one or this one it doesn't matter we've got a left alignment the left hand side of this figure is aligned with the left hand side of the what I would call the magnetic figure number two same applies if I want to go to a right alignment again let's put a marquee around it and we will go right and we'll click on either any one of the figures and it right aligns we've got the handles on here already so we can do a center alignment and there we go it's in the center and if we do a center alignment the other way as well we've got handles on the figure so we don't need to put them on and we click on either one of these figures the small square moves but the big square never moves because it's the magnet let's just put handles on this figure grab hold of the center and move it away now as I show you there's one way to draw handles around all the, around the figures and that's to encompass them in one big marquee box and we put handles around it escape or there is an alternative way of selecting both these objects in a certain order and that is by selecting the big one first and its handles go on we'll now hold down the shift key and we'll click on the second one okay we didn't see handles go on the second one but what we've got we've got a set of handles that encompasses both objects so they're a group but just remember that this time we clicked on the small rectangle as the second object 
so we would expect the second object to be the magnetic object. Let's check it out again. So let's do a left align, click on this one, and sure enough it's been attracted to the second object. Okay, now we've lost the handles on here, and you might be tempted, whoops, that's another thing that I will show you, you've got the, the wheel on your mouse will make the picture bigger and smaller. Um, if you go to the corner of that small square and roll your wheel, mouse wheel in and out, you'll go in and out on that corner. That's a useful feature until you want to get it back to a normal page when you'll have to go to the middle of these uh, seven magnifying glasses and click restore the page. Okay, we got diverted there for a few seconds. At this moment we don't have handles on these two objects and we could be tempted to do this. The order in which the objects were drawn hasn't changed. We drew the big square second and so if I was to go to for instance to an alignment along the bottom edge and click on here, which one will move? The small one. If we want to make the big object magnetically attracted to the small object we'll have to make the small object selected second. So we put the handles on the big object, shift key down and click on the small object. Okay and now we'll do a bottom alignment and this time you will see the big square move down to the small square. We've still got the handles on there, we haven't changed the handles so we can try a center alignment. Okay so we've lost the handles again so we've got to restore the handles and we'll put handles onto the big object first and the small object second and now we'll do a center alignment the other way. Click. And I hope that fully explains all the quirks and the way in which you might be able to use the alignment tool. I mean, once you've got these two figures aligned and you want to move them both together, you draw your marquee around the outside and you drag this around. Or you can use this tool up here which says I want them up in the top left hand corner. Click. And they both go up to the top left hand corner. Okay, now this next set of tools up here was a bit puzzling to me to start with. I couldn't quite work out why you'd want them. But hey, I'll give you an example where you might, for some reason, want them. Here we've got a rectangle. We'll draw another rectangle. We'll draw another rectangle down here. And we'll draw another rectangle in there. Now these four figures on the page, uh, this was the last one that was drawn. So let's use this tool up the top here called the height tool. But before we do that we have to tell it what it's going to apply to. So we're going to apply it to all four objects on the page and we're going to choose this height tool and it doesn't matter which one of these we click on the answer will be or the result will be the same and I'm going to click on it click and actually what's happened is the outer three objects have turned into the same height as this master object the last object we drew let's control Z that to get it back to where it was Right, let's marquee all of these objects again. And we'll choose this one, which is a size. Now we can click on any one of these objects. Remember the last one drawn was this one. And hey presto, we've produced three clones. Let's do Control Z to get back. And this time, we'll just marquee those and we'll do the same thing again, size, click, escape, oh, sorry control Z, get us back to where we were and this time what we'll do we will marquee separately each one of these objects with a shift key so we'll go click, we'll hold the shift key down now and we'll click this one and then we'll click this one and then we'll click this one last and I think you're going to guess what happens. They're all going to turn. They're all going to change into this shape. So it could be quite a useful tool if you want to size objects. Say, for instance, you randomly put a load of holes on a plate, and you want them all to be the same size. Well, provided you size one of the holes, you can then use this tool to immediately make all the other holes exactly the same size. So that covers these three.
tools here. Can we remember which was the last object drawn? It was this one. Let's see what this tool does. Horizontal. Across. Right, it happened very quickly, but did you see what's happened now? The gap between this object and this object is the same as the gap between this object and this object is the same as the gap between this object and this object, horizontally. Let's do the same thing in the other direction, which is the vertical direction. Click. And we can choose any one of these tools. It's not as obvious this time, but if we look here, this overlap here is the same as this overlap here is the same as this overlap here. So here we've got some clearly overlapping objects. If I mark all these together, I'll just, I'll just point out that this is the last object that, we, that was drawn. And now we try this vertical down alignment tool and see what happens. Click on any one of them. And it's equally spaced here here and here. So again there could be times when this is useful for laying out on the page um, where you've randomly put objects on the page without any uh, precision or accuracy but you've put two pieces on the extremity of the page and you want the other two pieces to sit symmetrically in between. Well, the only other thing that I want to mention in this session is um, let's just get rid of these delete they're all marqueed so we'll just delete them. I'm going to put a rectangle up again and the rectangle and the rectangle with its handles on has got its little red cross in the center. I want to mention this little checkerboard here beside the padlock. It's the XY dimension at the moment is at the center of the figure because that's where the little cross is. So when I move this to 100 by 100 the center of the figure is on 100 by 100 if I move this to there select position reference OK you'll notice something now that it's no longer 100 100 in fact the reference is up the corner here so if I move that again to 100 by 100 you'll see it's the corner that's now moved to 100 by 100 so that could be of use to you I tend to leave mine on the center position but that's just a preference. There may be times when you want to move it around to something else, but that's what that little square does. So I think next time we shall get into some programming um, now that we've got mastery of the drawing tools.